All right, we're doing the rear pads and rotors on this 2019 Dodge Challenger. Uh, it'll be exactly the same for the years in the description of the video. Uh, I don't think the Scat Pack or the Hellcat's going to be the same. Those are probably different brakes. Uh, but this brake kit is actually uh, says any of the Challengers at all uh, that have the dual piston uh, caliper in the front there. Any models with the dual front piston caliper. So that's going to include your V6 models, your all-wheel drive models, and even uh, some V8 models as well. That being said, uh, any other years, including the Chrysler 300C and Dodge Charger, as opposed to the Challenger, uh, they're all basically the same vehicle. They're all going to be extremely similar. Before you get it up on a jack stands securely, you're going to want to go ahead and loosen those lug nuts a half a turn, which I've already done. And again, on a jack stand, you can see my red stand through the wheel there. Uh, do not leave it supported on just the jack. And by the way, real quick, we'll have front pads and rotors, which we've already done here. Uh, there'll be a link in the description for that. If you want to see that one, this one should be posted first. All right, then you can go ahead and pop your wheel off. Now, if it sticks on you, on the back side around the rim there, you can just take a block of wood and a little mini sledgehammer and tap around on it until it pops off for you. All right, now, if you're just doing the pads, you can just take the caliper here off, which there's two mounting bolts for it, okay? And you pop it off, slide your pads out, put your new pads in, and put the caliper back on. Uh, since we're doing the rotor, we have to take the caliper bracket off as well. Uh, you can take the whole thing off, just take the bracket off with the caliper still attached, but it's almost always to get the pads out if you separate them. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. Go ahead and take the caliper off here. Like I said, you got two bolts there for that. And then uh, we're going to take the caliper bracket off, which the bolts are bigger and deeper in. And then there's another one down here. All right, there's the two bolts there. So uh, for me, that was a 15 millimeter here. And then this uh, will spin on you. So you got to lock that in place to get that out. And that is an 18 millimeter. Uh, so if you don't have an 18, most people don't, or at least in your basic tool kits, you don't get an 18. You can just use an adjustable wrench or put some vice grips on it or something. So then it'll just slide off. You want to have something to put it on because you don't want to dangle it off the brake hose or you could damage the brake hose and then your brakes will stick on you. So use it to just wiggle off. And if you got a lot of corrosion and whatnot so that it's seized up, you can just kind of stick a screwdriver in there and pry it out. All right, so your pad will just slide out like so. You know, again, corrosion, you might have to work with it a little, pry on it, and just pay attention to the way they come out so you know which way the new ones go in. All right, and then when you know it, your bracket bolts here on the rear are 18 millimeter. On the front, they were 13 16 So then that'll just come right off. Obviously, good idea to pay attention to the orientation of that too. And then your rotor will come off. Oh, we probably got that stupid e-brake crap on here. All right, so first of all, if your rotor seized on there due to corrosion or whatever, high mi higher mileage and salty roads and all that, you're going to have to bang around on it till it breaks free. But on the rear, you have this e-brake crap here, okay? So here's your emergency brake shoes. So when you pull the e-brake, they expand out and they grab the inside there where that's all nice and rusty, and that's how the e-brake works. So on this automatic, uh, it just came right off. But usually in a manual transmission vehicle, and... Some of these have a manual transmission, I believe. Uh, <laughs> I know they at least first came out with that. I'm not sure about now because everybody's going automatic. But anyways, they would have like a port or a hole kind of like this, but that's for the lug nuts. A little rubber boot unless it fell out. Sometimes it's up here. You pop it out, and then you have to turn this gear here. So one way, it expands it, and it makes these pads push out and grab. So if you're getting stuck on, on these and it won't come off, like it's rocking back and forth, but it just won't come off, it's because it's stuck on these shoes here. So what you'll have to do is turn it the correct orientation so that it'll shrink it so that you'll then be able to pop it off. And you'll just have to remember to put it back where it was. Uh, too little and your e-brake's not going to work, but you don't really have to worry about that in automatic uh, too much and it's going to drag on you. All right, so I got my new caliper slid on there. Brackets back on and torqued down. The torque spec on that is, I don't know why it's more in the rear with smaller bolts than it is the front, but multiple sources said the same thing. 85 foot-pounds on these bracket bolts. In the front, it's only 70. So then your pads here, obviously, they'll just slide in the opposite way they came out. 
And uh, you want to look for these squealers here. That's what starts to hit the rotor when your pads low and it squeals to let you know you need to replace them. Uh, some kits, they only have one squealer for one side. Uh, mine has it on every single pad, so I don't have to worry about it. But you want to check and make sure if you only have one pad with the squealer for one side, you want to put it on the back where the piston is uh, because generally the rear will wear quicker. You also want to make sure you don't touch any of the surface of the rotor or none of the pad surfaces that touch the rotor either or your brakes are going to slip and slide and smoke and that's not good. Also just remember guys, for those of you who would ask, I get these from a company called Brake Motive on eBay. Not affiliated, not sponsored, but uh, generally people always ask me where I get these. So if you want to get yourself some, that's where I get them from. Uh, hopefully one day I can get them to sponsor me because I've been buying their brakes for well over a decade. Uh, but anyways, that's where I get them. And these are zinc plated so they don't rust, but if you get some generic stuff at the auto parts store or maybe even online if you're not getting the zinc plated drilled and slotted stuff uh, typically they'll have some sort of grease coating on it and it's for storage so that they don't rust uh, so if it's got that gunk on it you're going to need to get a big can of uh, brake parts cleaner and a rag and clean all that off of there all right so now that you got the new thicker pads in you'll have to push in your uh, piston here with you put the old brake pad there for a second and then hook up a c-clip to it c-clamp uh, and push your piston in all the way so you have clearance to go over these new pads. Then you want to come up to the front here under the hood and you got to pop this cover off so you can take the cap off your brake booster reservoir there. Uh, so that'll let the fluid level come up without pressurizing uh, as you push it in with your C-clamp. And you just hook the C-clamp up something like that. So my piston's all the way down now. You just turn it so it'll push your piston down all the way. And just be careful while you're doing this, don't smash this metal line or bend it or anything like that and pinch it shut. And then so if you push your piston in far enough, it should slide over the new pads and rotor. You have to make sure this is pushed on all the way and the pads are squeezing against the rotor and all that. You might have to mess with a little bit, but it'll slide over. And then your torque spec for these caliper bolts. Remember you have to hold that 18 inch wrench or something on there uh, to keep that from turning so you can uh, torque this down. 23 foot pounds of torque. And uh, prior to doing this, if you want to service those slide pins in there, as many do, uh, before you put this on, you would just grab that piece there and it'll the whole thing will come out. But that's part of the slide pin. You just got to be careful not to tear this rubber boot right here uh, when doing so and then also get it situated correctly when going back in. So if you want to service this and re grease these, you'd want to do that before putting the caliper back on. Put your wheel back on, uh, real easy with a five lug, you never want to go one to the next. You want to go crisscross pattern, which with a five lug, you just make a star pattern like this. Now the manufacturer recommended torque spec is all over the place on these, depending on what trim it is, but not only trim, but depending on what year it is, literally 2019, 2020 is different, 2020 to 2021 is different on the exact same model, uh, so they vary wildly, so I would re uh, recommend you refer to your owner's manual on that. Some of them say 80 foot-pounds, some of them say 85 to 110, some of them say 100, uh, so I'm just doing 100 foot-pounds of torque, that's generally what I'll do on any car. Uh, as long as it's not something heavy duty like a big truck or something like that. Uh, so I'm just going to put these on 100 foot pounds. It's generally my go to somewhere between 90 100 foot pounds. And uh, I've been doing it for decades, never had an issue. So, but if you want to know your exact torque spec for your exact year and trim and engine and all that, and they're even varied depending on which wheel options you have, uh, refer to your owner's manual there. And also, since this is uh, has a rear axle and it's an automatic. Uh, in park you can just torque it with the wheel up in the air or if it's a standard transmission then you can just lock your e-brake and do the same thing that way you don't have to worry about uh, putting in just a little bit of pressure on it not dropping it all the way you get torque on it and all that all right so once you've completed the other side then you go ahead and put your cap back on here after checking the, the fluid level make sure you're good on that and then what you're going to want to do don't forget to pop the cover back on you want to come in here start it okay try not to push down the brake pedal any more than you have to to start it and then what you want to do because the caliper the piston is still off of the the pads it's not in contact with them yet the pads aren't in contact with the rotor yet you want to lightly no more than halfway down very slowly just like my fingers doing here uh, push the brake pedal up and down slowly light pressure no more than halfway 
uh, five to ten times until you feel the pedal firm up and feel normal. If you just take off and go, your pedal's going to go to the floor because your piston's not even in contact with those pads yet. And the reason you want to do it slow and not go clear to the floor like that is some systems, if you, if it goes to the floor, um, you can trick your ABS system into thinking you blew a brake line, in which case it'll lock out whatever side you had to do that. So that's why you want to take your time, uh, press it slow several times, uh, no more than halfway down until it firms up and then you're good to go without a deer it's that simple if this video helps you out make sure you hit the like button for me um, if you'd like to support the channel especially if this saved you money over having to take it to a shop please consider hitting that thanks button under the video but i want to thank you for watching and i hope to see you around catch you on the next one